Hi, my name is Lisa Klingler. I am an educational consultant for the Capital Area Intermediate Unit. And I'm here today to talk about the CRA progression. And we're going to focus today on this video on, the, um, on fractions, comparing fractions, equivalent fractions, and also addition subtraction of fractions. So here we go. So like I said, we are working with the progression, CRA, and really just focusing on the C today with fractions. Now Jared also has some videos on multiplication and division of fractions, so make sure you check those out. This video is just going to be focusing on those beginning um, concepts of fractions, comparing and addition subtraction. So the first thing that we want to make sure students understand is what this 3 and the 4 represent. In CRA, the 3, the numerator and the denominator, represent the count and the size. Now these are not just new terms for students to get confused with the numerator and denominator. These terms are really a way for students to truly understand, conceptually understand what the numerator, what the job of the numerator is, and what the job of the denominator is. So for CRA, we are going to be using the terms count and size so that students can conceptually understand what the numerator and the denominator do. So the first thing I want to ask is, what is the size of this fraction? And it looks like the size is 4. So that will tell me how many of my counters I will need. So I first have four counters. The next thing I want to see is what is my count, and my count is three. So I'm going to count one, two, three. My size was four, my size is four, and my count is three. Now notice that I didn't just put out the yellow and the red first. I first put out the size and then put out the count. And that's going to be important for your students to do as well so they don't get confused with the colors. They remember what the count is and they remember what the size is. Looks like I need to find an equivalent fraction where the size is 16. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my size to 16 to figure out what my new count is going to be. So it looks like I have 4 here, so I'm going to keep adding until I have a new size of 16. 4, 8, I need to keep going. 4, 8, 12, I need to keep going. And 16. Now I need to make sure that my count is the same as my original equation. So it uh, looks like for every 4 my size needs to be 3. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my count over. So now I can figure out when my size is 16, my count is going to be 3, 6, 9, 12. Now for students to check that, they can see, well, what did I multiply? So I multiplied 4. This will eventually get into the abstract to double check that that is correct. Is 3 times 4, 12? And they can easily see why we multiplied by 4. Notice here I have 4 rows and my count is still 3 for each row. Alright, let's go ahead and try another one. So for this one, my size is the missing value. Okay. So again, we want to remember count and size. Count is my numerator, size is my denominator because that is their job. So I have a size of 3, so I'm going to first represent my size. And then it looks like my count is 2, so I'm going to say 1, 2. Now it looks like I need to have my count be 8. So I'm going to continue adding to my count until I have a count of 8. So here I have 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, and since we need to have the size the same, I need to make sure that every row looks exactly the same, every fraction looks the same. 
and I'm going to double check that my count is 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. So now we need to figure out what the size is. So the size is going to be 3, 6, 9, 12. Okay, I can double check. Looks like I multiplied this by 4 to get to 8. Mul multiplied this by 4 to get to 12. And again, you can easily see I have four rows, which got me to a, a size of 12. So that is how you are to compare and also figure out equivalent fractions. The next thing we're going to look at is how to add two fractions together. So we're going to use the same concept of count and size for my numerator and denominator. I'm going to start with my 1 half. 2 is my size. 1 is my count. I'm going to represent the 1 fourth. Looks like 4 is my size. And 1 is my count. Now in order to add fractions, I need to make sure that my size is the same. So in order to do that, I need to make sure that my 1 half and my 1 fourth have the same size. Now, if students are okay with finding the least common multiple, they can do that. If they're not okay with that and you want them to just explore that concept with working with fractions, they can always continue adding until they have the same size. So that is up to you how you want to teach that, whether you want to teach finding the least common multiple and going from there or whether you want to have them add and figure it out. I'm going to just go ahead and add to figure it out. So I just added 2 here and I double check to see if they have the same size and they do. Which means I need to make sure that it's the same count as my 1 half and now I can add them together. Now when we add fractions we are going to count and uncount to figure out the answer. So I'm going to work with this 1 half and I'm going to uncount and count so that students can visually see what the answer is going to be. So remember that the yellow represent my count. So it looks like I have 3 out of 4. Here I have no count which is a 0. So my answer should be 3 fourths. Okay. If you didn't count uncount, students can still see that they have a count of three, but they have a size for each one of four. The nice thing about counting and uncounting is they can visually see that they have three out of four and a zero left, which is three-fourths. Let's try another one. So here, the next one is two-thirds plus one-half. Just so remember, we're working with count and size. So here I have a size of 3. And I need to have a count of 2, so I'm going to go ahead and turn over two of them. I have a size of 2 and a count of 1. Now remember, we want to have the same size, so I'm going to either find the least common multiple or I'm going to add to these in order to have the same size. So I'm going to go ahead and add to this one, which means I have 6, and I think I can add to this one also to get to 6. Now I need to make sure that my count is the same for each one, so I'm going to go ahead and turn them over. Since I had the same size, I'm now able to add my two fractions together. And I'm going to count and uncount. So I'm going to count and uncount, count and uncount. And what I really like about un count and uncount is that now students can see that whole. They now can see that they have one whole plus some left over. So it looks like I have one. And what I'm left with is one as my count, six as my size. Okay, so by counting and uncounting, we're able to make sure that my answer is in a mixed number. If you didn't count and uncount, your answer would be as an improper fraction, which then you would turn into a mixed number. All right, and 
The last problem we're going to do together is three-fifths, and this time we're going to subtract one-half. Same concept, we're going, to count and un or we're going to use count and size, so we're going to have a size of five. I'm going to write that up there so we don't forget. Count and size. We're going to count three of those five. And same thing with the one half. I have a size of two, a count of one, and in order to subtract, just like for addition, we need to make sure we have the same size. So, usually students know that they can always multiply. However, if you are at the point where students are ready to find that least common multiple, they can do that as well. Or, if they're still in, in the discovery phase, they can start adding to each one in order to get the same size. So here I have, looks like my size is going to be 10. So I need to make sure that I have 10 here and I have 10 here. Once I do that, I also need to make sure my, so my count is the same for each. And now I'm ready to count and uncount. Now, because I am subtracting, I'm not going to be adding any more counts. I'm actually going to be uncounting both sides since we are subtracting. So I'm going to go ahead and uncount both sides. Uncount is the opposite, just like it's the opposite. Subtraction is the opposite of addition or the inverse operation. So I went ahead and uncounted, and I am left with a zero and one for my count, 10 for my size. So my answer is 1 tenth. When, you get, when students are ready for the representation on abstract, um, students will really be able to see that progression between concrete, representational, and then abstract.